Hey guys, welcome back to our Summer in the Psalm series. Excited to jump in to Psalm 2 with you today. We covered Psalm 1 last week. Um, I'll put out a schedule this week of kind of where we're going to be the next three or four weeks because we're obviously not going to have time to go in order as much as I'd love to do 150 weeks straight of this. Um, I think we would probably run out of time, but um, we're going to be in Psalm 2 this week, so let's jump in. Psalm 2 says, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? What an interesting way to start this second psalm. You know, the first psalm is all about the blessed man. What does the blessed man do? What does he look like? What does he not do? And then the second psalm shifts to kind of a a wider angle. It starts with, uh, you know, what does the blessed nation look like? Uh, The truth is we don't know. We don't know what the blessed nation looks like because all the Bible gives us is, you know, the nations do, the nations rage. It says the kings or the rulers of the earth set themselves and they take counsel together against the Lord, that's Yahweh, and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. Yet there may be no more uh, a clear picture of a psalm than when you uh, watch the news, when you look out your window, when you uh, take in all the things that are going on in the world right now you see this very thing you see the nations raging you see those in power raging against the laws and the statutes that god has placed in front of them more than anything what you see them raging against is like psalm says says against the lord and against his anointed against this anointed one against this ruler against this king that god's placed in control now if you're reading this and and you're not us, if you're reading this and you were somebody who uh, was reading this when it was written, uh, your mind doesn't go to Christ. Your mind goes to somebody like King David who would have wrote this song, right? And, and they're looking at David and they're going, man, when David was in charge, when David was doing what he was supposed to be doing, when David was the one, he, he was the one that ruled over the nations. All these other nations wanted to come and they wanted to take over and they wanted to plot against David. They wanted to kill David, but he was God's anointed king. It wasn't Saul. It was David that God anointed to lead his people. And it was God that took David and helped him uh, knock out mighty Goliath and moving forward, um, take on the throne and moving forward from that, defeat these other nations. That's what you would have thought. The problem, of course, with David is that David dies. The problem with David is that David's not perfect. We see that in multiple ways, maybe most notably when he commits the sin against God and with Bathsheba. To where the prophet Nathan has to come and tell him a story and basically confront him on his sin. See, that's the problem with David. As great as he was and as revered as he is, as he should be, in the crazy, mighty ways that God used David as his anointed king, there is a problem. The nations are still raging and David's dead. So, as always, when we read these Psalms, We want to look forward. We want to see how does this tell us about Jesus? That's the whole point of the psalm. It says in verse 6 of Psalm 2, God saying this, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Sounds a lot like Jesus' baptism, doesn't it? Verse 10 goes on, he says, Now therefore, O you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. So how does the New Testament use this? This is one of my favorite passages in the whole of the New Testament. Uh, We got Acts 4. And at this point, we've already had Pentecost. We've already had some major things happen. Obviously, Jesus has already uh, died and been resurrected. 
and been seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and really what we see at the beginning of Acts is, is how are these disciples who have become apostles, how is this early church, how are they going to interact with the world around them? How are they going to reach the world for the lost as we like to see? Well, it's not easy going. It's not uh, all wonderful after Pentecost. In fact, a lot of people are getting thrown in jail and a lot of people are getting harassed. We see not long after this that uh, Stephen gets stoned. Right? We, we see this throughout Acts, throughout the New Testament. But listen to this back and forth. This is Peter and John. They go before this council because they heal this man. And of course, they have a problem with it and, and they can't get them... Uh, to be in any trouble because the crowds are amazed at what's going on. In fact, they even, as they're getting ready to release them from this jail cell, they say, hey, listen, we're going to let you go, but do not say anything about what you're doing. And they basically tell them, hey, listen, I can't help but tell them. God has told me to tell them about Christ. I'm going to tell them. But listen to what they say. This is Acts 4, verse 23. It says, when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything within them. Now, here's where I want uh, to bring up Psalm 2. Listen to how they apply Psalm 2 to their current situation. Uh, listen to how they pray Psalm 2 out loud when they've been arrested and beaten down and threatened. Listen to what they do. He says, uh, verse 25, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant said by the Holy Spirit that he quotes Psalm 2, why do the Gentiles or the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed one. All right, now you could read that and stop right there and say, yeah, they're really against John and Peter and the new church, man, they're really against these guys. And, you know, they've got this special anointing. And you maybe hear people say to you, you've got this special anointing and God won't let you get touched. The problem is all of these people are getting touched. All of these people are, are probably going to be uh, persecuted and if not martyred for their faith. Right? There's a lot of things going on here. But listen to again, listen to how they apply it. He quotes Psalm 2. He says in verse 27 of Acts 4. For truly in this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. And who was against them, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. So when you read Psalm 2 and you read, why do the nations rage? You know who the nations are? Everybody. Everybody rages against the Lord and his anointed one. To the point that, as they're pointing out right here, they were against your holy servant, Jesus, who was Herod and Pontius Pilate, real specific, along with who? The Gentiles and the people of Israel. You know who that includes? Everybody. Everybody was against them. Why? Why were they against them? Verse 28, to do whatever your hand and your plan have predestined to take place. And now, Lord. Okay, so they've applied Psalm 2. When they read Psalm 2, they read it and go, hey, this isn't about David. This is about some worldly king. This is about Christ Jesus. This is about the fact that every single person wanted it to get rid of Christ Jesus. They railed against the Lord and his anointed one. They wanted to burst the bonds that he was putting on them. They didn't want anything to do with Christ. But Christ prevailed, right? God prevailed in his plan of the gospel. And so what do they ask in verse 29? Listen, and now, Lord, Look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. When you read Psalm 2, I pray that you apply it the same way that the New Testament church applied it. That with all the things going on around you in the world the way it is and uh, different controversies and different political things and uh, all of the, the wars and the rumors of wars and natural disasters, all the things that are going on around you, my prayer is that when we read Psalm 2 and we think about Psalm 2 and we think, God, why are the nations raging? Why are the people plotting in vain? The first thing we would remember is we're those people. We were those people. That's who we naturally are. But because of what God has done in our life, we do not view him that way anymore. And then number two, 
Would it encourage you to preach the word, to proclaim the word with boldness, to not water it down, to not be scared of it, to not be ashamed of it, to not let anyone threaten you, to not let the world discourage you, to not let uh, something happening inside your own life keep you from doing it, to not let guilt and shame get in the way? No, would you proclaim the word with boldness? Why? Because God has set his anointed one on a holy hill and no one can take him off of it. Because no matter what happens in and around you, no matter what sin you commit, no matter what sin somebody commits against you, no matter what happens to the world we live in, God has set Christ on his holy hill and he will not be removed. And as Psalm 2 tells us, if you're under the watch of that king, you are forever taken care of. So I pray that that's encouraging to you. I'm excited about the summer in the Psalms, as always. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Got a lot going on here at Pleasant Hill. Um, hopefully you've kind of getting ready and gearing up to volunteer for our July 3rd fireworks event. And I really hope that uh, you be praying for our students. They're getting ready to go to camp. We've got VBS in about a month. So many things going on. Uh, may we be a people that proclaim the word of God with boldness because of what God has done in Christ Jesus. Love you guys. See you later.